Hey, let's get into some uh, some more physics with our objects here. We're going to start using what's called a uh, rigid body and cloth dynamics um, in 3ds. Um, just a little quick intro, just to show you um, what kind of effects you can get from assigning different physics to, to objects. Again, a little bit like particle systems, um, but we're not going to get all um, blobby like we like we have been lately. So. Let's get into this. I'm going to start by creating a simple sphere object right here. Uh, I'm going to create a second one right here. Um, and what I'm going to do is start to assign these objects of uh, some motions here. So I'm going to auto key. I'm going to use my move tool. And let's say in five frames, I want it to move this object to move from here to here. All right. Uh, actually, let's do it a little bit differently. Let's go from here to here. Same thing with this one. I'm going to move this one from here to there. Let's say they're just about to, to hit each other. Bam, bam. All right. So we've got motion set. I'm going to leave that alone now. And what I want to do is assign dynamic properties to these. And so I'm going to go to customize because our toolbar for this is not showing. So I'm going to go customize, customize user interface. wait forever. Ah, here it is. We'll make sure that you're in your toolbar option up here on top. I'm going to change this from animation layers to mass FX toolbar. And I'm going to unhide that toolbar. And mine pops up over here. A lot of times this guy will pop up over here somewhere or just kind of floating around. I like to kind of tuck it away and leave it there. All right. So I have options here. And if I select this and hold it, I have dynamic, kinematic, and static. Um, to start off, I'm going to make this dynamic. I'll do the same thing here. Make this one dynamic. Select it. Dynamic. And so when I go to preview it, nothing happens. They just kind of bounce around. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is get them to move. I'm going to select and create, make them kinematic. Another way you can do that is if you click it, you've already added one of these features to it. You can come over here into the modifier and change it to kinematic. Okay. Now, when I play it in the little preview bar here, it will play and then stop because we assigned it to stop. Okay. So the action is to go and stop. So I want it to be kinematic, which means I want it to keep going. So here I have kinematic selected. I'm going to go to until frame. It stops at five. So let's make it go until four. I'm going to do the same thing for this guy. And when I go to preview it, they kind of now react with each other. Now they kind of bounce around because of gravity issues that we haven't messed around with yet. Um, so kind of gives you an idea of what... Now if you play it on, your, on here, nothing happens because what you have to do to actually... This is basically giving you a preview of that simulation. Uh, what you actually have to do is bake those physics that you assign to it here and it will ba basically record those physics for this motion in your timeline um, same thing for this piece here so let's say you had one object that was dynamic the other one is kinematic okay and i go to play it <clears throat> they kind of react not really well i want to actually move this motion i want to speed this up a little bit and move that motion to three. I'm going to give it more force. So now instead of stopping at four, I want it to stop at two. Okay. So it's going to go make that same motion, but through two. So let's see what that does. Gives a little bit more force, kind of ricochets off of it a little bit. Okay. Now, another thing you can do, since we've kind of assigned it kind of certain properties, you can all also adjust the mass and density of an object. So I can take this and like make it really sturdy and dense, play it, and then it like totally shoves that other ball off the off the map there. So different things that you can do here with this type of motion or this type of um, these type of properties. So I'm gonna leave it at that and let you guys play around with that because you can apply these to any kind of motion, any kind of object that you create, and it will react to another object. So another thing you can do, talked about 
creating a cloth. So I'll, I'll just make a cloth out of a plane for right now. And notice that I have a lot of segments in this plane because I want it to react and bend. And the more segments you have, the bendier it's going to be. So I have 50 segments aligned to each one of those things. I'm also going to create a something simple. I'll create something like a box. Okay, something like that. All right. I'm going to make this cloth into something that will wrap around this, this box. And so you have in the same set of tools here, this. I'm going to select, I'm going to create the selected as an M cloth object. Um, so when I go to preview it, play it, it falls down because there's a gravity applied, but it goes right through our object. So what do we have to do? We have to turn this object into a dynamic object like that. All right, so let's look at it now. Let's preview. Here, my cloth now bends around. Now, you can also change the physics of that cloth. So I can say, hey, how dense do I want that cloth to be? How um, bendy do I want that cloth to be? There's different damping, stretchiness settings, density of it. Um, say if I make it super stretchy and super bendy, of course, it's only from a range of zero to one and play, see how that affects. Wow, that is really loud in here. Um, so kind of get the idea how you can create a simple cloth object out of a plane. Um, it will um, play around, it will self collide. If you don't want it to collide with itself, what it's gonna do is basically fold into itself and it creates kind of complex geometry. But this is a pretty easy way to get a simple cloth effect out of out of your object. So um, play around with this. You saw that when I really crank up some of the things here, um, it acts weird as far as it bounces everywhere. And that's because um, that dynamic object inside doesn't quite know how to react with the motions that I just set to it. Um, that can be kind of calmed down with um, different gravity forces that you can apply later. Um, rather than it working with uh, the global gravity, you can apply your own kind of gravity system to this. So give this a try. Um, animate a few scenes. What you'll end up doing is actually baking these properties into your scene. So when I go to select an object and hit bake, um, you'll see that it starts to bake those motions into my scene. Now it's recording everything and created. Now it should react with my actual timeline. Um, it only, only baked that one motion of that object. So I have to go through and choose my other objects and bake those in as well. So I have to bake this and go over here and hit bake gonna record everything it's playing everything through like it's all being baked but it's only doing one object at a time and so now if I go to play this it baked those motions there and go through and do the same thing uh, bake those motions into your other objects bake this into this cloth into your um, your plane and bake the other dynamics into that box and that way everything will be be recorded correctly. So here we go. We do one more. So if I see how that plays through, there we go. Pretty much done. Now that's it. So um, I guess I could make the box. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there bouncing around because of weird gravity. So play around with this. See what you can come up with. Um, use a variety of objects. Use something creative. Um, you don't know, make like a bat and ball and see if you can make them react with each other. I'm not sure which, what you want to do, um, but see what you can come up with. Just kind of tinker around with this and play around. Have fun with it and post your AVI to Classroom. The end. <laughs>